sometimes even hunters go to bed at night and dream of what it would feel like to be a titan to just stomp around and punch everything in sight well this is that build enabling hunters to live the titan life just with more dodging and fewer crayons Hello everyone, my name is Furry Bubble, and welcome to my first video of Arc 3.0. I had actually planned to do a Titan build first in Season 18, as I didn't cover them in Solo 3.0 season, mostly because Solo Titan quickly became Equip Lordly Splendor, Profit. But the resilience bug on Warlocks and Titans with Arc 3.0 makes building something that is going to stand up to tougher content a bit more challenging, so we're going to dive straight back into Hunters. As with all my builds, I'm going to show the aspects, fragments, mods and weapons that I'm using right up front, so if all you want is the bare details then I'm not wasting anybody's time. I'll then go into an explanation of why I'm using what I'm using, and at the end show some legendary campaign footage as proof of concept that it can at least work in that level of content. So let's dive straight in with the subclass details. Obviously when on Arc, we're using the Gathering Storm Super. Your jump and grenade choice are entirely down to your own preference, I'm using Triple Jump and Storm Grenade. But the two crucial things in our abilities are Gambler's Dodge and the Combination Blow Melee. Get a Powered Melee kill to refund your dodge and dodge near an enemy to immediately refill your melee, a synergy that Liar's Handshake Hunters have been well acquainted with for years now. For Aspects we're using Lethal Current and Flow State and we have four Fragment slots which are taken up with Spark of Resistance, Spark of Feedback, Spark of Ions and Spark of Recharge. Our exotic armor is Assassin's Cowl, which grants us invisibility and a small amount of health and shields on a charged melee kill. The armor mods I'm using are Melee Wellmaker, Seeking Wells, Well of Ions and Font of Might. My fifth slot is taken up by Radiant Light for the plus 20 boost to strength. For weapons, the centerpiece is an Arc Shotgun with the 1-2 Punch perk. I'm using Xenoclast from the Vanguard playlist, but there are plenty of other options which can drop with it. Matador 64, A Sudden Death, Found Verdict, Dead Weight, there's loads of them. I pair that with a Kinetic SMG with Swashbuckler, in this case my Crafted Submission from the Vow of the Disciple Raid, and an Arc Heavy Weapon. If I'm running solo, it'll usually be my Adept Hothead Rocket Launcher. If I'm in a team, then my Firing Line Storm Chaser. Those are the basic details of the build. So if that's all you came for, then I thank you for your time and hope you enjoy the build. If you do, then let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and subscribe for more Destiny content, from builds and guides to weapon reviews and more. We're pushing ever closer to hitting the required numbers for partnership on YouTube, and the goal is to reach them by the end of the year, so your support is greatly appreciated. Now though, it's time to dive into the build in a bit more depth. The heart of the build is the synergy between Assassin's Cowl, Lethal Current, Combination Blow, and Gambler's Dodge. The lethal current aspect states that after dodging, your next melee attack has increased lunge range, jolts the target and creates a damaging aftershock. The jolt debuff then causes the target you've punched to chain lightning to nearby targets. So we run in, we dodge and then in one punch we take out multiple low level enemies. That also gives us void in invisibility from Assassin's Cowl so we can safely reposition for our next melee or if need be run to safety. The kill with combination blow then refills our dodge, meaning we can start the cycle again, but this time with a stacking damage buff to our melee from combination blow. If we come up against a higher tier enemy, then a quick shotgun hit to proc 1 2 punch adds even more damage to our potential melee. If we've picked up one of the many arc elemental wells we'll be creating via melee well maker, then we can stack even more lethality onto that single punch. So let's go through a few numbers, do a little testing. As you can see here in the basic Lost Sector testing, a base level melee does 8,675 damage. One stack of Combination Blow puts that up to 13,879. Two stacks hits for 22,207, and a full three stack does 35,531, over 400% higher than the original base melee damage. Now add in a 1-2 punch shotgun, and we're hitting for 106,000 591 per melee. Add in the 12 pellet hits from our shotgun, which each hit for 2,964, and our total damage output is 142,159. But we're not done. Finally, we can stack on Well of Ions, which states that after picking up an Arc Elemental Well, our next melee does increase damage, and Font of Might, which gives us a 25% damage buff to our Arc weapons after we pick up an Arc Elemental Well. So our 1-2 punch shotgun now hits 
the 3,705 per pellet, 44,460 in total. And our melee does 138,568 damage for a grand total damage output of 183,028. And as if that isn't enough, then we've got the Jolt Aftershock to add insult to injury and it's just goodbye Lost Sector boss. I mean, you can go higher. You can get bigger damage than this from a punch on Hunter on Ark. Stick on Liar's Handshakes and you'll be slapping bosses for even bigger numbers. But in my opinion, it is very much worth trading off a bit of that damage for a bit of survivability that comes with Assassin's Cowl and its invisibility. Going invisible after a powered melee kill means that we have almost as much invis uptime as an Omni Night Stalker, meaning we can escape from tough situations. However, that isn't the end of things. Our second aspect, Flow State, makes us amplified whenever we defeat a jolted target, which is pretty much whenever we punch somebody. Amplified increases our dodge recharge if we do find ourselves without it. It greatly increases our reload speed, and most importantly, it gives us huge damage resilience while we're dodging. When it comes to fragments, there's two which I think are very important to the build, and then two which can really be tweaked to whatever your personal preference is. Spark of Resistance, which gives us damage resistance while surrounded by enemies, and Spark of Feedback, which increases our melee damage after taking a melee hit, are the two that I would have in any version of this build. They synergize perfectly with the playstyle and with what we're aiming to achieve. Beyond that, it's really up to you. I use Spark of Ions, which gives us an Ionic Trace when we defeat a Jolted enemy, though there is a cooldown and that will appear on your screen. This is mostly to help with my low discipline and give us a higher grenade uptime. Finally, I use Spark of Recharge, which gives us an improved melee and grenade recharge rate when critically wounded. There are times when you're going to get caught out and take damage, so recharging abilities in that state is another nice little problem solver. I considered Spark of Frequency to give us increased reload speed after a melee hit, but with the reload boost from being amplified and how often we are amplified, it didn't feel really necessary. You could go for Spark of Beacons to add a blinding explosion to your shotgun kills, or you could add Jolt to your grenades as well with Spark of Shock, really just whatever fills your preference and individual playstyle on those final two fragments. Stats wise, I've built into Resilience as my first priority, with high strength to ensure a quick cooldown should our dodge melee flow get out of sync. All my remaining stats were then thrown over into getting as high mobility as possible, and will rely on invisibility to give us time to recover health if we do get caught in a bad situation. As ever with these builds, I haven't included any seasonal mods in the base build so that they are viable beyond the length of a single season. However, for season 18, there are plenty that you could throw on. For example, Amped Up can increase your Amplified uptime even further, or if you're in champion content, then perhaps take Bad Amplitude to Jolt Champions and make them chain lightning to nearby targets. You could throw on Lightning Strikes twice to improve that grenade recharge rate, but none of them are vital to the build working. In terms of champion stunning, obviously you have a shotgun for Unstoppable, and you can throw on whatever barrier or overload weapon you require in your kinetic slot in place of the Swashbuckler SMG. You could even give up a class item slot for Season 18 and use the Surge Detonators mod if you're facing up against overloads. Do I think this build has GM potential? It's very good, but I'm not convinced. But then I'm not convinced about Arc 3.0 as a whole in GMs. The amount of enemies that can one-tap you with ease in Grandmaster seems to work against the idea of running around punching stuff. At best to me, it seems like it'll be a high-risk, high-reward effort. So far I've taken it into the Duality Dungeon and the Legendary Campaign and it has stood up very well to both, so it's absolutely viable in sort of mid to high tier content. Once DMs roll around then I'll be testing it out and I'll post in the comments to let you all know how viable it proves to be. Now though I'm going to play out some Legendary Campaign footage to show you the build in action and prove that the concept works in content where you are under leveled. Let me know what you think of the build down in the comments and also let me know what builds you'd like to see next. If there is a specific class or a specific exotic that you'd like me to base a build on, then post it down below. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and want to see more, but until next time, thanks very much for watching. Looks like we're interrupting something. Where's the wizard overseeing all this? Around here. I'll go and the will about to the crystal out of them.
wizard just fled. Follow them. They're closing ranks around the crystal. Time to finish this. 